What's up guys, it's Brent LeBlanc, coming back with another look development guide. This is part 2 of the theater chair, shading and rendering an Arnold from Maya. Let's get started. So now in Maya, these little wood planks, so I just textured this one, and then duplicated it all the way up and all the way over, and the same with these chairs. So this is actually all the same chair. So what I textured in Painter is this. Then I just duplicated it a bunch of times and then went through and changed the rotation to give it a little bit of a difference here. All right, so first we'll look at the fabric. It's a pretty simple material. All of my textures that I've done in Painter, pulled them in, converted them into TX. This little spot here, if you remember in Painter, when you import them, it's gonna be looking for your texture set name it was 1001, 1002, et cetera. So wherever it says 1001, when you go in here, so when it writes it out, theater chair smoothed, which is what the object was called. It's a identifier of what it is, and this is just for you, so you know what you're selecting. And then it will do the six texture sets, one through six. Completely depends on what your UDIM layout is. I'm not going to go over this. You probably know what this is. And if you don't, probably a video out there that'll tell you. So I hooked up my roughness, did a little bit of a, an AI range, which is basically just levels put into the specular roughness, which is going to be the grayscale. So I just pulled the red channel, even though this map is already black and white, uh, made sure that the color space is set to raw because roughness is linear. Took the red channel because all three of these channels are the same. Whenever they're green nodes, they only take a single channel or a gray scale these red nodes take three channels so keep that in mind if it does take three and you can't figure out why that node's not hooking up figure out oh is this three channel or a single channel the metalness is single channel too i just took the roughness put it into the sheen kind of a fuzziness attribute that's straight inside the shader i just took the roughness value put it into this uh, ai range which is just the levels then i took the height made sure it's raw set it up properly did a remap, put it into the bump map. I just added a little bit in there. Then I, uh, these noises. Okay, this gets a little complicated. So for that chair thing is, is that I wanted it to change uh, the fabric of each one to be slightly different than the last one. As I did use the base that I had made, then I added in some noises so that it changes the frequency of the displacement of each one of those fabric chair parts. And the way that I'm mixing that, I had actually done this in a previous video. How I'm doing a lot of this procedural breakup, I'm taking the object ID. Each one of these objects receives an ID, which is just a number. Every mesh that you have in your scene has an ID associated with it in Maya. A lot of other packages too, but sometimes you have to add them. In Houdini, you have to do this attribute per remote thing. So it has an ID. So what you can do is you can grab that ID and you can use it to change an attribute. I've got this AI utility node. I set its shade mode to flat, its color mode to object ID. So what that's going to do is it's going to give me a flat color based on the object ID of the object. So I'm just taking that number, a random color. So an AI random, which is just an AI random node like that set the type to color so what it's going to do it's going to grab this object id plug it into input color which is just a random grayscale value then i'm going to take that ai rand plug that into an ai range so what that's going to do if you can see here i've got an output min of zero and an output max of three so what that'll do is it will do a random value between zero and three so what that does is i have three noises here taking the Remember, this is a green value, so I'm taking the red channel, putting it into here, go to other, and I'm binding it to index. So what index is, is just how this AI switch is, is uh, mixing between values. We should probably set this value to anything below 2.9. So it's gonna cycle between this input zero, input one, and input two. So it's gonna grab either this noise, this noise, or this noise. Change the scale, the offset, and uh, things like that just to make each noise look a little bit different. So then what it's gonna do is I'm adding that noise, a random one of these three noises, added into my original height. It's going to randomly pick an object ID and add 
a noise on top of the original height for each one of those fabrics. And that would just give a slightly different displacement look depending on its object ID. And I did that same idea for color as well. So I have four different colors that I'm cycling through. So I took the base color, which if I just use the base color, every single one is going to be exactly the same because they all have the exact same UVs. They have the exact same texture map applied to them. I'm taking four different uh, values. So I just did a color correct, AI color correct changed its hue, its contrast, and just modified each one a little bit different. Did the same thing, AI utility, the random color, and the range going between zero and three. Between zero and three is actually four values. So zero, one, two, three, I think something like that. You have to go in and figure out which one it is. Okay. Then I take that, put it into the base color. So it's going to sample each one. And what you'll notice is that each one is a slightly different saturation and lightness value. I did the exact same method for the wood as well. You see this wood and this wood, they're receiving the exact same texture, but I'm using object ID and changing the hue and saturation and value of each one. If you wanted to go a step further, you could actually make three completely different texture variations. And then instead of cycling just a color correct, you could actually be cycling different file textures inside this AI switch. It's just a way that you can add a lot of uh, variation to your materials. And then the last thing that I did is I wanted to add a procedural dust on top of everything. So you can see here, this has white film on it. And then on top of here and on top of here. So every material in the scene has this dust material that I just call called scum buildup. And there's really nothing going on in here. A gray value, I have the roughness set really high and I'm just mixing it into my final materials. So here's my chair wood mixing this scum buildup an AI mix looks like that, a mix shader. And it's just mixing these, this wood texture and this scum buildup. And how I'm mixing it is I'm grabbing another AI utility node, setting the shade mode to flat and the color mode to normal, is I'm actually grabbing the green channel. So the green channel in normal is facing up. So anything that is in the Y vector, anything that's on the top level, so this little area here, this here, nothing that's coming in from uh, this direction or the side will have dust on it. It's only going to be top surfaces. I'm going to set the test resolution to like 25% so it renders quickly. Let's render that. And what I'm going to do, do a render region, and then I'm going to do isolate selected. So let's grab this. So for some reason, it won't actually show you the normal by itself. So we're just going to this multiply. So what it's doing, taking that normal, taking the green channel, which is going to be that top face. I'm taking this noise, which is just this random AI noise, and I'm multiplying out that mask of that noise top vector and putting it into another range just to modify a little bit and then uh, flipping it just because the the order that I had these plugged in. This is what the scum buildup material looks like. And this is what the theater chair would by itself. And there's the final. Go to the fabric theater chair, go to this part. So here's the fabric material by itself. There's the scum buildup. Here's the mix. So the reason you don't see the rest of the chain is because I just copied in this last node into the other files. So what you can do is instead of actually copying and pasting a node from this tab to another tab, what I'm doing is I'm actually just transferring this exact node into another one. So if you select a node, go into another tab, and then you say add selected nodes to graph. What that does is it doesn't duplicate that node because that's actually not what you want. You want the two to be driven by the same thing. So this is still connected to all this other stuff. You can see how this little thing is white. That means that it has other stuff hooked into it. I'm taking this node and I'm just adding it into this graph, mixing it into this same material. All of them are being driven by the same mix because I just want that Y vector broken up by a noise mixed into every material in the scene. Let me go back into and show you each one of these chairs uh, to illustrate what that, that random noise is doing. Here is my base fabric texture color. Here's the darker version. This one's a little darker. This one's a little brighter, a little less saturated. This one is is a little saturated, a little less saturated still. And then I'm mixing it like that. This AI range, each one of those uh, objects is receiving this one of these colors, which is just a number. Then I'm taking that color and then randomizing it. Then I'm taking that random range, but it's only picking value. So if I do luminance, value to luminance, index, each one of these is a different value. 
based on what its object ID is. It just adds another level of complexity. You could imagine that not every single one of these chairs was sat on the same amount of times. Sometimes the chairs would have been replaced, so some would be newer than others, even though all of them could be really old. Um, you're just trying to give a little bit of visual difference. You could even go further. Uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. Anything you can think of to saving time doing it procedurally because what you really want to do is as a cg artist what you're trying to do is add a level of complexity that happens in reality which is hard to do by hand so you want to try to do things smart where you get it to a certain point with manual labor and then you use the computer to do variations of that and there's all kinds of other software you know like designer painter uh, alchemist it's all moving that way so that you can create complexity quickly uh, without having to do a lot of manual labor uh, I really want to do more Houdini and I think that doing more procedurally based stuff is uh, something that's really interested me so that's it for this one please like comment subscribe also, if you'd like, you can go onto my gum road and you can pick up the smart materials that I've been uh, making for these theater chairs and you can use them for whatever project you'd like. All right, guys, keep texturing. Until next time.